Hydrogen bonds are the third category of bond we need to talk about. We've talked about covalent bonds, both polar and nonpolar. Remember, covalent bonds are by far the strongest bonds. They involve sharing electrons. And then ionic bonds are this association between ions of opposite charge, not as strong as covalent bonds. And now we're going to talk about hydrogen bonds. In order to understand hydrogen bonds, you need to recall what a polar covalent bond is. So we're going to talk about that to start, and that's going to set the stage for hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is going to be very important. You're going to see it in several different types of molecules throughout the semester. You're going to see it not only in water, but also in DNA and in proteins. Hydrogen bonds give water so many of its unique properties, and water chemistry is really critical to your understanding of living systems. So that's why it's important to understand these hydrogen bonds. So let's look at water. And we've already talked about this part of the story. Remember that oxygen is very electronegative. A very important fact to remember, which means it has a very strong pull on those shared electrons. Electrons. <laughs> and what that means is those electrons, which have a negative charge, those negative electrons are spending more time around oxygen and orbiting closer to oxygen, further away from hydrogen, closer to oxygen. Oxygen pulls them in closer. It's an electron hog. If you have negative particles orbiting closer to you, you're going to be a little bit more negative than your neighbor hydrogen, who has all the negativity orbiting further from him. Okay, so your friend comes and gives you this negative story, and now he's feeling a little bit more positive, and now you're feeling a little more negative. That's kind of what's happening here. And what happens as a result of this, what happens as a result of oxygen being an electron hog and pulling those electrons in closer, is oxygen becomes a little bit negative relative to hydrogen. So we say that oxygen has a partial negative charge. So partial negative charge. It's not an ion. I need to make that very clear distinction. Oxygen does not become an ion. Hydrogen does not transfer an electron to oxygen. They are still sharing. It is a covalent bond. It is a strong sharing of electrons. It's just unequal sharing. Oxygen becomes partially negative. Hydrogen becomes partially positive because those negative subatomic particles are orbiting further away from hydrogen. Hydrogen becomes a little bit more positive, oxygen becomes a little more negative. Again, these are not ions. So this is a partial positive charge. Obviously, you almost would never have one water molecule anywhere. If you're looking at a glass of water or a living system, you have millions of water molecules. And in every one of those water molecules, we have the same setup. The hydrogen and the oxygen are bonded together by a polar covalent bond. In every single one of these. It's polar covalent because they're not sharing electrons equally. And in every single one of these molecules, same setup. Polar covalent bonds holding the water molecule together. All the hydrogens have a partial positive charge, and all the oxygens have a partial negative charge. This sets the stage for what we call a hydrogen bond. Because remember, opposites attract. It's now the third time we've seen opposite, opposites attract. The partial positive of a hydrogen of a neighboring water molecule is weakly attracted to this partial negative of the oxygen. 
and they're going to form this weak association called a hydrogen bond. So the same thing would happen over here, and so on and so forth. In fact, this oxygen could be attracted to several hydrogens of several different water molecules. It's usually indicated by dots rather than a line, indicating that it's not really a bond, it's a temporary association. If you were looking at a glass of water, the hydrogen bonds between those water molecules would be breaking and reforming constantly. It's a very weak association. Again, electronegativity is what sets the stage for this whole thing. Unequal sharing in this polar covalent bond between hydrogen and oxygen causes oxygen to be a little bit negative and hydrogen to be a little bit positive. And now neighboring water molecules are weakly attracted to each other. Hydrogen bonds do not hold oxygen and hydrogen together to make a water. So this is a water molecule, this is one, and this is one. And hydrogen bonds are holding them together. So this is what it would look like. This is a water, a water, a water, a water. And they're being held together. Neighboring water molecules are held together by hydrogen bonds. These are polar covalent bonds holding this together. This is DNA. DNA, the structure of DNA is two strands running opposite of each other. They're called anti-parallel strands. And the bases on those two strands are hydrogen bonded together. This is a good setup for DNA because every time we need to make a protein, we need to go and read the DNA recipe for how to make that protein. So we need to break those hydrogen bonds. If those were covalent bonds, we would need a lot of energy to break those bonds to make a protein. Whenever we need to make a new cell of any type in the body, we need to replicate the DNA in its entirety. And in order to do that, we need to break these hydrogen bonds that hold the two strands together. Proteins. The, what we call the secondary structure of proteins, you'll learn what this means in a, a later unit. The secondary structure of proteins is the result of hydrogen bonds. You can see hydrogen of this part of the molecule attracted to the oxygen of that part. And same here, these three dots indicating those are all hydrogen bonds. Okay, quick review question before we move on. What type of bond holds the hydrogen and oxygen of a water molecule together? Okay, so which bond on this picture is it talking about? It's talking about this one. So what is that? It's a polar covalent bond. When it says be specific, it means don't just say a covalent bond. And of course, the correct answer is not hydrogen bond. It's really important that you know the distinction between what's holding this water molecule together versus what is holding neighboring water molecules together. Okay, so polar covalent bond is the correct answer. And now, of course, the next question, what type of bond holds neighboring water molecules together? So this one to this one. And that, of course, would be the hydrogen bond. This is a much more difficult concept to understand relative to covalent and ionic bonds. If there's any part of this confusing, I encourage you to rewind the video and watch it again as many times as you need to. This story should all make sense. Remember, electronegativity is what sets the stage for this whole hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonds are very important to understand, and we'll talk about them more in the next unit, Properties of Water.